around those or to use those chairs to sit around their fire feature. And the fire pit does have an exterior dimension of 48 inches. They're using UL uh, listed products from Fire Gear Outdoors. That's our uh, 29 inch round disc with our 22 inch spur that is uh, listed and tested to a 65,000 BTU uh, uh, amount of gas that it uses for natural and propane. There is an adjustable knob on it. It does have a thermal couple safety system. Basically what this means is if there's an issue that the flames blow out, the fire will go out. So the gas won't continue to run like a match lit system. This allows it to be installed in limited commercial applications as well as in different municipalities and codes that require auto safety shutoff devices on their systems. It does have also the convenience of a push button battery start. That's a double A battery that goes in there. Push that uh, sparker, turn the knob, light your fire, adjust the flame height. It's sold as a complete kit, so there are lava rocks included. Uh, something that's been uh, mandatory the last four or five years are ventilation or is ventilation. That's the use of vents on either side of a fire pit to make sure there's no issues with gas uh, accumulation if there was ever an issue with gas lines uh, failing or uh, uh, rodents or something uh, creating a failure in the gas lines. So those are uh, included with the kit. As well as uh, as of uh, 2020, Fire Gear Outdoors has a, a limited lifetime warranty in residential installations of our burner systems, as well as our uh, pans too. Sorry, for some reason. Or... Try and do advance my slide there. Oh, I went back too far. Sorry guys. Here's the components that come with that kit. So on the left here is our burner system. It's come a completely assembled system with the spark igniter control panel. There are brackets that come with this to mount in the uh, landscape uh, block, this, this the, uh, segmented retaining wall that you see right here. A lintel is included to support that block. Makes it e easy, convenient, no cutting to be able to install the controls in the landscape material. The vents shown here are of course, are sold as a pair, come as a pair to ventilate that fire pit. 18 inches a square of uh, cross ventilation is what is required by manufacturers that make outdoor gas burner pit systems. Again, as an issue uh, or to resolve any issue that could occur with uh, gas leakage or gas uh, line failure due to rodents or other things that could happen over time. So ventilation is extremely important. Those vents are included with the kit. We do include the lava rock as well. It's a one inch, two inch clean lava rock. It's been washed at least once. It's suggested that it's rinsed or washed one more time before it goes in the fire pit and covers the burner system. That's where the combustion begins is the uh, ability for the gas to go through lava rock to mix the gas with air to create a nice yellow flame. It also hides the burner system so it's not exposed and then allows that uh, gas to air mixture to create a tall flame effect when this is burning or more of like an upside down tornado effect to the flame. And then the uh, metal pieces you see in the bottom left over here which are called our flex frame which are shown in the, in the block material. Uh, glue underneath uh, course number one. Of course, if you're using their optional uh, cast top, you can see that in the right photo there. That would go on top of that uh, course. And then uh, you have a wind block as it's shown in the photo there for the, for the flames. And then an optional log set is shown in that photo too. And the flex frame is important because what that does is that allows for the burner pan or that flat disc to be elevated out and removed for service and maintenance. Uh, occasionally we'll get a situation where somebody will glue their landscape block over the uh, edges of the disc and not allow it to be removed and then you can't get underneath if you have to service it. So that flex frame that you see there comes as two pieces 44 inches long, glues in between the courses of the block and allows for a lip for that uh, disc to sit on to be able to be removed for maintenance. And that log set I talked about, Grand Canyon Gas Logs is a manufacturer out of Phoenix, Arizona. They uh, manufacture their logs out there. They're made from a ceramic refractory that has a reinforced steel fibers in it so that the material will last outdoors. It won't break down or deteriorate outdoors over a period of five years is what it's warranted for. We use nine individual logs that give you a weight of 40 pounds and it can be stacked up to 16 inches tall to give a nice campfire effect to it. And when that uh, spur burner that comes with the kit uh, starts to, to ignite, the heat of the logs and the draft will carry those flames up through the logs as you're seeing in the photo there. So that is another option that RC makes, RCP makes available to uh, go on their grand gas fire pit if a consumer wants that look of a campfire. They can do s'mores on top of that, they can cook different things on top of that. They got to remember that of course 
those things can accumulate on the lava rock, you know, any residue or drippings from the foods can accumulate on the lava rock or on the logs. But certainly roasting marshmallows and s'mores on a fire pit, whether it's gas or wood burning is, is, is acceptable and allowed. So you can still get all the ambiance of, uh, of a gas fire uh, outdoor cooking without the smoke of a wood burning fire. Fireplaces. So the necessary kits, uh, of course, are, they manufacture fireplaces and a number of different styles of fireplaces. Even though the fireplaces exteriorly have some different sizes to them and different looks, and the interiors vary a little bit, size does not matter when it comes to the gas log set. Fireplaces typically either taper slightly like they do in the grand gas, or they have more of a rectangular footprint to the floor inside, like the Victorian, the compact, and the colonial. Well, our gas log set is made to be to uh, be installed in any one of those. It's referred to as an 18 inch set. That's just talking about the length of the front log. The actual burner system itself, the 304 stainless steel burner system that has a lifetime warranty on it, is also tapered to fit in those fireplaces. There is a control valve assembly mounted to the side. Once again, it's a safety shutoff system because this is an omni-tested system that can be used in limited commercial applications as well as residential installs. So this sensor will, will shut the flames off or shut the gas off if for some reason it blows it out. The logs are made from a ceramic refractory. They do have a five-year warranty on it. It is 52,000 BTUs for natural gas or for LP gas. It's 49,000 BTUs for natural gas. It does say it operates with a standing pilot. So the consumer pushes in a knob, does need to use a butane lighter to light it. This is one of the most fail-safe and simplest systems that are available instead of getting into the, the, the expense or the sophistication of electronic ignitions to go in these fireplaces. We've chosen to use the more traditional standing pilot safety systems in this log set. And uh, when we again, when I say 18 inches, that's the front log. Log sets get installed near the back of the fireplace. So people sometimes get confused. They say, well, the face of the fireplace measures 36. The log set's 18. That's 18 inches different. Well, it's nine inches on each side, but keep in mind the fireplace tapers on the grand. When installed near the middle of the fireplace, uh, in the back of the log set is near the back of the fireplace, it really only leaves about five to six inches on either side, which is completely acceptable as far as a look. It fills it up enough to make it look full in that fireplace. And when you get into the compacts and the, uh, and the uh, Victorian fireplaces, as well as the colonial, those having narrower widths in the front, it completely fills the fireplace up. So size does not matter. This will completely fit the fireplace as well as fill the fireplace up to the customer's liking. Valve assembly has a year, burner system again has a lifetime warranty on it, logs have a five year warranty on it. At the BTU ratings they have there, they will heat up. It take about an hour or so and average temperatures in the spring, summer and fall with days in the 50s, 60s, 70s and above, you can get some nice radiant heat of six to eight feet in front of that fireplace after it's been on for an hour or more and it heats up that brick interior of those fireplaces. It will give a customer some radiant heat in there. So RCP or Rochester Concrete Products um, in their necessary kits, again, makes gas options available for you. Log sets for the fireplaces, grand gas uh, fire ring, log sets for the grand gas fire ring. These are options and components that they do stock and make available for you guys. And uh, again, is there any questions in the chat box? We'll answer those before I move on. Ah, good one. Jesse's asking, what side does the gas line come in from? So on the uh, log set from Grand Canyon Gas Logs, the uh, gas connection would come in on the left side or the back of the fireplace. So again, the gas connection for the gas fireplaces or for the uh, fireplaces when using the Grand Canyon Gas Log set, the gas line would want to come in from either the back wall of the fireplace or the sidewall. Now I know when it comes to the grand because they're using a manufactured stainless steel firebox with a refractory lining that only has knockouts on the left side or the right side. So in the grand gas fireplace the gas is going to come in on the left side. On the uh, other units it would come in on the left or the right side. That's for the most convenient way to install it. If a customer or a contractor does do it on the right side of the fireplace Obviously, by extending gas lines or using a different stainless steel whip, it could be done on the right side. But 
for ease of installation, left side on the grand and left side or back on the Victorian colonial or compact. Any other questions on the gas fire features? I do get a question really quick. You know, people say 65,000 BTUs. How much flame height is that? That sounds like a low flame. That's the standard that was established uh, to make a fire pit safe or, or in an installation, whether it's commercial or residential, meaning that the flame height generally only gets to about 16 or 18 inches tall when the gas line is ran to it and connected. So that 16 to 18 inches tall does sound a little, like a little low for, for some people. That's because the flame will go up 16 or 18 inches, but wind will carry it to the left or to the right 16 or 18 inches. So uh, Rockwood has chosen to go with, in their necessary kit, a UL listed system with, a, with that uh, listed BTU rating of 65,000 BTUs to create a safe flame height to it. It's not that other things couldn't be done. It's just that as a manufacturer, they went the route of safety for their consumers and done the 65,000 BTU UL listed system. And then as far as gas lines, you know, we, I mentioned, or Jesse asked what side to come in on. Distance makes a big difference in the diameter of a gas line, depending on the pressure of the gas. When it comes to liquid propane or LP gas, the gas supplier will be the person sizing the gas line and running the gas line 99% of the time. So they'll know what to do as far as gas line because liquid propane has a higher pressure. It's usually a two pound system. Natural gas in most cases is a lower pressured system. It's only a half a pound or what's referred to as a water column measurement of pressure, which is between four and seven water columns for natural gas. And when doing a grand gas fire ring or using the fireplace with a gas log set from Grand Canyon, uh, gas line does typically need to be larger in the lower pressure systems. Usually a three quarter inch to a one inch line is better for running a grand gas fire ring or the fireplace is on a log set depending on the distance of the gas line run. So minimally, uh, three quarter inch could be used. I'm a big advocate of bigger is better when it comes to gas line to make sure you don't starve the customer for the height of the flame that they desire. So doing a, a one inch gas line is generally a better way to go. And we'll transition on everybody into uh, the next part of what uh, the necessary kits have available is for the backyard and that's outdoor kitchen kits. Somerset Grills, Let's Grill. That's the manufacturer that I represent as well as what uh, the necessary kits used from Rochester Concrete Products slash Rockwood Retaining Walls. And here we go. As manufacturers, they've both been in business a long time. Both family-owned companies, uh, Somerset Grills for over 20 years, owned by a gentleman named Jeff Straubel and his three sons. And then of course, then the RCP family is now three generations into the business of doing mortarless concrete manufacturing, and they date back to 1914. Both of these companies focus on their core businesses to provide you guys with exceptional customer service. Backed with sales education, not only do you have the uh, representatives that represent the, the RCP products, but you also have myself as a, in field support or a technical support and strong warranties on all of our products. Both manufacturers are really striving to meet what's current in the outdoor living, um, expressing for the, uh, experience in the design and expression of what a consumer wants. Both offer a wide range of products and with uh, what RCP offers with our grills and the refrigeration, sinks and accessories, they're actually offering our most popular items for their kitchens. So it'll create the perfect atmosphere that your customer wants at the budget that they are looking for, as well as making it completely easy to design and install and very flexible for uh, installation delivery and to create that experience that the customer wants. I apologize for my amateur presenting on GoToMeeting. COVID-19 has uh, brought me into the world of hosting GoToMeeting, so I'm getting there. Um, what and where? So what that means is distribution, right? So throughout the United States and Canada, both manufacturers have distribution and products available for, for installation, design, and, and purchase. Advertising. I know both manufacturers do some different types of advertising and different uh, trade publications. Some national magazine advertising is done by Somerset Grills. Social media, Somerset Grills, uh, if you haven't done it, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can follow us on uh, Facebook, Instagram. We're on all those major social media platforms as well as uh, Rochester Concrete Products is as well. Rockwood Retaining Walls and Accessory Kits. 
we're on those major social media sites to drive sales to the customer, to drive the design to uh, the uh, commercial and residential users. Supply, Somerset Warehouses, and it's located in Huntington Beach, California, Surf City, USA. That's where we have a plant where we manufacture a number of our products, and we ship and warehouse out of that facility as well. And then, of course, RCP does stock and sell our product through their warehousing system too. Customer service. You have RCP staff, Somerset Grills employs technical support. I'm here for technical support as well as any issues or problems that may arise. We have plenty of uh, ability to handle situations when they come up. We're here to help. We don't want things to fester and boil and become an issue. Uh, questions, issues, problems are addressed in less than 24 hours in, uh, at a time, or at in less than 24 hours time. And then websites, of course, somersetgrills.com is available. We have a, a lot of major, uh, um, major we have a lot of information available on our website if, if it's needed on our products as well of course as the different uh, websites that uh, RCP operates and then manufacturing of course RCP manufactures their products in the USA between their facilities and their licensees well Somerset Grills manufactures in their plant in Huntington Beach all of our doors and drawers and accessory items a limited selection of our grills we manufacture in the USA as well and then we do source some parts from different parts of the world so we can all say that we are made in the USA. Inventory, not a problem. Even with COVID-19, Somerset Grills is maintaining and has maintained a really high level of inventory. We believe in inventory. We're not a pass-through manufacturer making stuff as an order comes in and having extended lead times. Even with our supply chain from overseas, we've secured enough inventory that we can be there when the seasonal demands kick in. And here we go, products. Let's talk about those really quick. So the accessory kits offer, of course, the grill, the heart of the whole outdoor kitchen, right? They're using our new, uh, they're using this year and promoting our Somerset Sizzler Pro Series in a 32 and a 40. They do have a matching side burner that goes along with that. They do make refrigeration available in a 24 inch size. It is outdoor rated refrigeration. Accessory components are available too, of course. They have the outdoor components with a door and drawer combination, a double drawer, a uh, insulated, I mean insulated, a ventilated double door. Uh, RCP chose to go with a ventilated double door that's going to go underneath your gas grill now just to mitigate any possible issues of, uh, of uh, gas accumulation in a grill island. They've, they've went on the side of safety with gas fire features. They've also went on the side of safety when it comes to outdoor kitchens, and that provides uh, enough ventilation to meet any typical municipality or uh, areas, different parts of the USA's code requirements for ventilation, whether that's vents installed in the grill cabinet or island, or whether that's vents that have to be installed in a door, well, we offer ventilated doors to make sure there's no issues with uh, uh, accumulation of gas. All of our products are double lined, so they're, they're heavy gauge, double lined doors and drawers. They have backs to them like your kitchen cabinetry would. They have soft closes on the drawers. They have stainless steel handles and hinges, so it's a product that is made to last. It's all 304 stainless steel. It is all American stainless steel by Ryerson, the largest stainless steel supplier in the United States, and it's all made in Huntington Beach, California. And here we go. So commercial grade outdoor stainless steel appliances. I can't stress enough to let your consumer know, but also as a contractor or a builder putting in the products, clean this stuff. I've been to job sites where the job's done, almost done, just about done. They've uh, installed maybe some polymeric sand in between the block or they're doing a, a, um, a sealant on the surface of the block and I look over and the outdoor kitchen appliances are filthy. They've got production dust all over them. They've got dirt all over them. They still have plastic on them clean these off give your customer a beautiful looking kitchen when you guys are done uh, they're easy to clean just using a soft cloth so and using something simple as wd-40 which a lot of guys typically have on them wd-40 is not a petroleum based material or a, a cleaner it is a uh, it is not petroleum based so it won't hurt the appliances it won't hurt the uh, environment it is environmentally friendly or you can use things like zep which is available at the different uh, big box stores or Weidman's. These are all stainless steel cleaners that are readily available. And uh, I suggest getting some uh, 
some cloths and some cleaner, clean it off and leave it with your customer. Show them that it's just like waxing their car, whether it's seasonally or more preferred, maybe, maybe every couple of weeks or maybe every couple of months or maybe just twice a season. Sometime clean your appliances and keep them looking new. Uh, the necessary kits do come with a cover for the grill, so they do have a, a nice heavy vinyl cover that covers the grill. It's got UV inhibitors in it from changing color. It is fleece lined to help it in the winter months from uh, from uh, ripping and tearing due to the cooler temperatures or cold temperatures that can happen in different environments. But man, if they clean their appliances once in a while, they're going to look a lot better or newer longer. And here we go, the heart of the outdoor kitchen, the Somerset Sizzler Pro Grill that RCP is promoting this year. They've went from our Sizzler series to the Sizzler Pro and we'll tell you why. This is gonna be the workhorse of the outdoor kitchen. It's available in a 32 inch size. That works great for just about any family up to a, maybe six people. If you're a large entertainer or a, or a large uh, uh, or larger families, the 40 inch is a monster as far as cooking. You're talking 40 different pieces of meat could go on that uh, cooking surface. It's a really large grill in the heart of the outdoor kitchen. And what are the features and benefits of going into these? <clears throat> Construction, not to get into metallurgy and the, all the ins and outs exacts of the, uh, of the different grades of stainless, but we do use 304 stainless steel and we use a stainless called 443 that not everyone is necessarily uh, familiar with. 304 is the most common and the most abundant stainless steel in the world as well as in the United States primarily. It's the only stainless steel used here in the US for commercial project products and or grills and cooking appliances is 304. And that's a nickel based stainless steel so you don't have rusting issues on it. Now 443, what is that and why? Well 443 actually has some less, has less nickel in it but it has a more of another metal in it called molybdenum. And the advantage of this stainless steel and, the, and where we use this stainless steel, it's used in the bottom or the bowl of the grill. And the reason is, is there's a lot of heat that comes off those cast stainless steel burners. And there's a lot of expansion and contraction that happens with the metals. Even though we use a heavy 16 gauge lid and a 16 gauge bowl to the grill that the burners, cooking grids and briquette trays sit inside of, we use a 443 because 443 actually with that molybdenum the bowl of the grill expands and contracts less and, and lasts longer. And since this is an overseas product, 443 is extremely available overseas. Matter of fact, it's the main stainless used in Japan for surgical versus uh, the United States, it's 304. And that's because of the fluctuating price of nickel as an element is very expensive. So by using a 443 for the bowl, we get a bowl that lasts longer, able to give it a lifetime warranty and not have any issues with expansion and contraction. Then you see on there, double lined hood. What's a double lined hood? Well, that basically means the lid or the hood of the grill, the bottom underside of the main grill where the heat indicator's at, has another piece of 304 stainless steel. We do that so that there's air that circulates, keeps the exterior of the grill a little cooler, but it also keeps it from bluing or deteriorating in color due to overheating. And we use stainless steel. Some of our competitors don't choose to use stainless for that piece. They'll skimp and they'll use a thinner grade. We use 16 gauge just like the lid or they use an aluminized steel, or they do something else instead of stainless. We use stainless steel. Our cooking grids, they are eight millimeter. That gives you a great cooking surface to be able to sear and lock in the food juices when you're cooking. Burners, they're 14,000 BTU cast burners. The rear burner is 15,000 BTUs, and that's an infrared burner. It has heat zones. Design, we have exterior LED lighting, so they can use the grill. You can design this grill to be used in areas maybe where there's not a lot of ambient lighting just due to the house or due to the trees or something like that. So in the early spring and late fall, it can be used year round with that additional lighting that's on the uh, surface of the grill to light up your control knobs, as well as interior lighting. We use halogen lighting in the interior. We have a flamethrower ignition system and it's a man and there's also a manual flash tube ignition. To have a grill listed or tested by the agencies that do this, which is typically AGA, American Gas Association, they want the grill to be able to light if the igniter itself doesn't work. So on the right hand side of the cooking surface, over here in the right corner is a little tube underneath that cooking grate. You hold your butane lighter over it, you turn that burner on high, it'll ignite the grill automatically for you. It takes about two, oh, anywhere from uh, uh, 20 to uh, 40 seconds to get enough gas buildup and it will ignite it automatically. 
We use an easy clean briquette system and I'll go into these features. And then options, we do have carts available. You guys are building outdoor kitchens, but we have carts. We do have the side burner, which of course uh, uh, RCP makes available. We do have a rotisserie kit and we do have a, actually an infrared sear burner for that customer that wants to cook on infrared heat. All right, innovation. Our grills, uh, you know, you want to facilitate outdoor living by providing a functional innovative uh, innovative features. Well, with 304 heavy cast stainless steel burners, you're going to be able to do that. With these uh, with these uh, with these double line hoods and the durable materials it's made from and heat resistant, you can grill what and when. And when I say that, what do you mean what and when? Well, when is well with lights, cast burners, 14,000 BTUs, I can grill virtually year round. No, I'm not going to grill when it's 10 below outside with 14,000 BTUs, and I may not grill anyway because it's too cold to stand outside. But with this type of heat and with a cast stainless steel burner as wide as it is, as you can see in that photo there with the grills burning, that width on that burner being a little over three inches will heat up and radiate that heat up to the cooking surface through our briquette racks to make sure that there's plenty of heat for searing. So this is a grill that could be used generally all the way to probably, is, depending on the winter months, it could be used. Uh, all the way up into the mid to late December. It could be uh, not used in the whole coldest part of the winter and then start again using it in February or March, depending on the type of year we're having. And then what? Well, when we say what, that means what do I cook? Am I just doing hamburgers, hot dogs, bratwurst, sausage, steaks, you know, those kind of things? Or am I doing different things that are lighter or more delicate, like fish and vegetables? And you can do those things on this grill, and I'll get into that. And then, of course, the sizing that we make available Plenty of heat at 71,000 BTUs for a 32 and 85,000 BTUs for a 40 inch grill. So there's plenty of heat to give the ability to, to for versatile cooking. And like I said, cooking mostly year round, depending on what you cook and the type of winter that we're having. And how do you get the gas into that grill? Well, that is the valve assembly. And what that is, is that's a flamethrower valve. What that means is that valve, as you can see there with that orange wire, when you push the knob in, that knob is then releasing gas through this jet right here, which is putting gas into the burner. But at the exact same time, if I have the, when I have this knob pushed, the knob on here, pushing the stem in, I'm throwing gas, as my mouse is showing you here, I'm throwing gas right into this uh, flamethrower here. So what that's doing is, is that flamethrower is uh, right here. Is, is basically gas is coming in, it's going up through the flamethrower tube. I've held that button in for about uh, four to six seconds to get enough gas built up to be able to ignite. Once I slightly turn that valve and I've got it pushed in for four to six seconds and I've got it turned maybe to 11 o'clock, I'm gonna turn it just a little bit more to 10 o'clock and I'm gonna hear a large, a, a loud snap. That's the spark igniter. So that's generating a spark here and it's shooting that spark right over this spark plug right on the end of that flamethrower tube. And what's happening now is I'm igniting this burner with a live flame. I'm not trying to have that little sparker sit against a metal burner that could have some deterioration on it. It could have some uh, moisture or humidity on it and it won't light. I'm actually lighting the grill with a live flame. And the other great thing about our valve assembly is this valve assembly is completely behind a firewall of the bowl of the grill. So all this is behind there. It's encapsulated in that control panel so it's protected from the interior of the grill where there's food juices and the enzymes and that that can deteriorate it, as well as the uh, burners that could overheat things. So all of this is protected within the control panel. The valves have lithium grease in them. We actually lifetime warranty the valves. So not only does our valve have a lifetime warranty, but that means our igniter has a lifetime warranty as well because it's married to the valve. It's one of the best ways to ignite a grill is with a live flame. And also, the uh, the what the what has to be remembered too is uh, when a grill's not used for a long time. I talk about down here after periods of non-use, basically gas in a gas line will start to deteriorate, and what that means is that gas is slowly breaking down. Believe it or not, it's not leaving the gas line. It's not escaping anywhere. It literally breaks down. If I haven't used my grill since uh, Thanksgiving weekend, and now that it's got warm and it's uh, well here, obviously it's May, but uh, Maybe I wanted to cook on a warm day in late February, so it's been 60 to 90 days since I've used my grill. I go out there, I push the knob in for four to six seconds. I, I hear the loud snap. It won't light. What's going on? I don't smell any gas. The gas line's on. 
Well, you may need to do that process for three to five times because gas will literally break down or dissipate in the gas line. So you may need to hold that knob in for uh, four to six seconds, snap, you don't hear anything, you don't see the flame that's gonna shoot out onto the burner because that flamethrower shoots about a six inch flame out. So it's visible from the inside of the grill when you're looking down. You may have to repeat that process three to five times because it can take that long to, uh, to allow that grill to light. All right, the burner. 14,000 BTUs, cast stainless steel, lifetime warrantied burner system. The importance of cast stainless steel and the size of that thing, again, as I talked about earlier, is it's radiant heat. It's gonna heat up, it's gonna throw that heat up towards the cooking surface, it's gonna retain that heat. So if I'm cooking, it's a little windy out, like it's been here, I live in Southern Wisconsin, it's been a little windy the last couple of weekends. We've had some warm weather, we've had some cool weather. I cooked on the grill the other day, it was about 55 degrees with about a 15 mile an hour wind. Well, when you open up that grill to turn the food or add food to your grill, you the heat escapes. Well, having a cast stainless steel burner at that three inch width will radiate that heat up to keep the cooking surface hotter, longer, and then heat zone separation. Well, what the heck is heat zone separation? So what that means is this, what you have are these stainless steel walls. They're just resting on a stainless steel pin that's in this bowl of the grill. These walls sit in between each of the burners as shown here on the left. And then in this uh, picture on the right, it's showing you those walls. All they do is sit down uh, just about a quarter inch below the holes on the side of that cast stainless steel burner here. What they do is they create a separate zone for each individual burner. So for example, I turn my far left burner on high because I want to cook some red meat and sear that. The burner next to it, maybe I want to do some hamburgers or some chicken breasts or things that are a little bit more delicate that could fall apart or burn a little quickly. So that burner I might put on a medium to a medium low setting. Well, if I don't have that heat zone separator there, what I get is the heat bleeding. In other words, the heat just bleeds over from side to side in the grill. By having that heat zone separator, you can literally have one cooking grate that is uh, at about 490 to 550 degrees on high, and I can have the cooking grate next to it almost 100 degrees less, so I can create a separate zone to cook more delicate foods, because I don't have heat bleeding into the next cooking surface. Without heat zone separators, you only get about a 40 degree difference in temperature. So the heat zone separator can make a big deal when it comes to the use and operation of your grill for cooking different foods. In briquettes, we have a lot of competition in the gas grill industry and there's a lot of our competitors that don't use briquettes. They don't, they think they're a waste of time. They don't think they do as well of a job in distribution of heat. Actually, they're wrong. It's all about price. We could build our grill with just a stainless steel baffle plate like a lot of our competitors have and just leave it at that. But stainless steel as a metal will never heat up completely evenly, right? It's, it's, it's a metal. It's going to heat up. It's going to radiate heat through itself, and it's going to radiate that heat up. That heat's going to expand through it and radiate up. Problem is, is that stainless steel, then you can get hot and cold zones on it. By taking a stainless steel baffle plate, covering it in a, in a ceramic briquette, and then allowing another piece of stainless steel to go on top of that to hold that in place. Not only do I now have the advantage of ceramic, which will heat up, retain, retain heat, allow for some really good searing of different foods, it also vaporizes food juices much better than just food juices hitting a piece of stainless steel. Because you can smoke in a grill, you can grill in a grill, <clears throat> and you can barbecue. Grilling is heating up a meat, searing it, locking in the food juices, allowing those food juices to hit a surface and cook back into it, that's grilling. Barbecue by name is actually adding a rub or a sauce to that food, whether it's prior to, during, or after it's cooking. And then there's smoking, which is typically low and slow. And I'm not saying the Scissor Pro is a smoker, but I am saying you can smoke in the grill. You can put a smoker tray in there, you can add that flavor of natural smoke to your foods. But these briquette trays make a big difference. Our grills tend to be a couple dollars higher than our competitors because we're the only ones that have decided that doesn't matter which model you make, you have of our grills for residential use, we use briquettes. They are still the best way to distribute heat evenly, vaporize food juices, give the flavor that the customer wants. They have a five-year warranty. They're standard across the board in all of our grills. We still believe in them. 
even the higher end manufacturers that are out there, uh, the real high end stuff that's still produced in America, uh, there's different brand names out there. They are all using briquettes. It's more this middle of the road Buicks out there, I call them, that uh, a lot of the manufacturers got away from briquettes because of price. We've decided to stay with that and offer the customer the best cooking experience they can with these premium briquette trays. And then I talked about interior lighting. It's halogen, it's a halogen bulb. They're not an expensive bulb, bulbs are available. They usually last three to five years. And then rotisseries. Yes, we have a rear rotisserie burner on there. The rotisserie kit is an option. People say, well, why then do you have a rear rotisserie burner? The reason for a rear rotisserie burner is it's cheaper to build a grill with it than without it. There's still a fair amount of percentage of America, usually in the Sun Belt of America, that still does a lot of rotisserie cooking. They have a lot more outdoor time than the than the Midwest and the North, so they do a lot of rotisserie cooking. They create their own rotisserie chicken and roasts. And also, what's great about a rear rotisserie burner is if you're planning an event or a party and you want to pre-cook a bunch of different meats, doesn't matter what they are, hamburgers, hot dogs, bratwurst, sausage, chicken breasts, you could pre-cook a whole lot of foods, put them in those throwaway two and a half to three inch deep drip pans that have those that you buy at the the uh, the uh, Costco's and Sam's Cubs of the world and have lids that, that cramp, crimp, crimp onto them. You could pre-cook a whole lot of food, leave it in your grill, leave your burners off, leave the rear rotis burner on and have a warming drawer. So you can use your grill as a warming drawer if you desire but you can also do some great rotisserie cooking if you want. That's the advantage of having a rear rotisserie burner. That's why it's standard in all of our grills. And yes, we make a rotisserie kit available. It holds 25 pounds. It's great for doing a couple chickens, doing uh, some larger, uh, whether they're beef or pork roasts. It works really, really well. You put a drip pan below it, as I show in this photo down here. Uh, I've dedicated a, uh, like a two and a half inch deep, uh, aluminum drip pan that I've dedicated to just grill use and I use that with my uh, different roasts and chickens and it works out really really good the uh, the uh, rear rotis burner is on it will heat those liquids up they will vaporize and add flavor to the food side burners are available they match the grill they have their own lighting you'll notice those little round uh, dials or uh, what they are is the push buttons here I'm using my mouse you can see that's what turns the uh, light on the grill and the light on the side burner on and off. But how does the side burner get lights? It has a cord about four foot long that plugs into the back of the grill. If a side burner is purchased separately, it will not have lights. It has to be plugged into the grill to have its lights work. But if you do have somebody that buys the uh, big green egg or the egg slash Kamado module, but they do want a side burner to do uh, some different uh, sautés or boiling of vegetable of water for vegetables or different foods, that they want to cook in a pan or a pot, uh, you can get a conversion kit that'll allow this to be turned on via the use of a, tr a power supply. It does have eight gauge cooking grades as well, and they are 15,000 BTU burners. They're brass, they have lifetime warranties. They will produce enough heat to be able to cook on. And then all the accessories, again, soft closing drawers, stainless steel handles, nice uh, returns here of uh, 3 eighths of an inch does a really nice job in your outdoor kitchen, will last a long time. Refrigeration, not to get too deep and technical, but there is outdoor rated and outdoor listed. Uh, RCP has chosen outdoor rated, which means you take it, you unplug it in the winter months in the sun, and you turn it off. You can, leave it in, you can even leave it plugged in because the compressor does have a, uh, a heater element in it to keep it warm over the winter months. It is, uh, it is waterproof, it's electronic uh, components are waterproof, it's listed for outdoor use. Typically, once you get below 40 degrees, you should turn it off. Typically, if you have it on when it's that cold, it's gonna be really hard to keep or maintain a temperature because that's the temperature outside. They are uh, rear and front ventilated versions. They are UL listed, they're 304 stainless on the doors. They have aluminum interiors on them, so they'll last a long time. There are reverse doors available for left or right opens. Versus outdoor listed. Outdoor listed are your inexpensive refrigeration. Uh, that's available as well. It just means you can plug it into a GFI outlet. It's damp proof, it's not waterproof, and you better unplug that thing and take it indoors when it's 55 degrees outside because it will deteriorate and last one or two seasons. And if you buy any dorm type of refrigeration that's below $300, uh, typically that's going to be something that uh, is not at all listed to be outside. It's electrical hazard. I would not recommend 
buying an inexpensive fridge for a convenience unless it's going to be in a three season room or undercover uh, like that. It just will not work in an outdoor kitchen without being a safety issue. And we're here for support. We have technical support. We can tell you anything you need to know or how, what you need to do with your products. Again, lifetime warranties on the construction of the grill and all the stainless steel components, the burners, the valves, the cooking grates, briquette trays, or five-year warranty. The, uh, the uh, a couple of interior components and electronics are a one-year warranty. We are here to service and support these grills. We have everything that you need when you need it and are happy to help you when you're looking at doing design and build for any of your outdoor kitchen needs. And that is what I have, everybody. Is there any questions that people want to type into the chat box? You know, we had a few people come and go as we were going. I guess maybe I was that thorough. That's what I have for a presentation, everybody. I'm always available if you need something. Oh, I see a chat. We have, are the back of the doors really have backing? Um, so when you look at the uh, door drawer combo, there is a backing to that. When you look at the drawers, the double drawers, there is a back side to that double drawer. When you look at the ventilated doors, there isn't a back on the ventilated door because of the ventilation that's in it. That's a good point. The ventilated doors, you have to have enough air to get through that. So the ventilated doors, they are 16 gauge stainless with stainless handles and hinges, but the backside is left open to make sure there's no blockage of the ventilation. Good point. Anything else, everybody? Well, all right. Well, I appreciate everyone coming. If you ever need anything or have questions or issues, Please don't hesitate. Uh, this uh, presentation will uh, get to RCP and be available for additional use by anybody who'd like to use it for presentations. Thanks, everybody.